Um, so multilingual is not very easy. And uh, I've experienced this a couple of times firsthand at Drupal, Drupal events uh, when I got my badges. Uh, this is a badge from one of my Drupal events. This is my <laughs> account site from one of the last Drupal cons. This is the official program of one of the Drupal cons where I presented multilingual Drupal 8. So, so I like to think this as an analogy to where we are coming from, where multilingual is an afterthought and we may get it right or we may not get it right. Um, and we want to get to a place where multilingual is a very integral part of our system and we support it as much as possible. So this is only one of the many things that happened in Drupal 8. There's been many initiatives and non-initiatives in Drupal 8 that improved the system. And there's been very excellent work in services, views, mobile, configuration management, et cetera. And I would be the first person to admit that I was freaked out. That there's a lot of change in Drupal 8. And I even wrote angry emails to some of the other initiative leads at the start. And I got very embarrassed at the end. Uh, because I thought it's going to fragment our resources and it's going to be very hard and, uh, and we will not achieve either of the goals that we wanted to achieve. And I regretted all of that because what we ended up with is we empowered each other a lot more. So you will see through this session that all the changes that the Views Initiative brought in, all the changes that the Configuration Management Initiative brought in, a lot of those things uh, that came from other, other uh, places really helped a lot you to make better multilingual sites. They are, they are not the multilingual initiative, but they helped a lot for you to make multilingual sites. And I'm presenting this session, but reality is there's a lot of people who contribute to this initiative. This is a list of all the people who are contributing to our initiative. If you are in the room and you contribute, can you please stand up? If you comment on these issues, <laughs> submitted patches, you are not standing up. The reason probably for that is there's a coder launch right behind these curtains where those guys are sitting down and working on those patches. So that's why. Uh, if you count those people, we have almost 900 people who contributed to this initiative. Uh, it is not counted the same way that Dries counts the 1,600 people in core. We count everybody who commented on issues, put reviews in, or do any of those things who appeared on issues with comments. Um, so we, we are more liberal in how we, how we uh, count contributions. We also had a lot of fun. So we've had a lot of sprints around at different places. We had sprints in Barcelona, Berkeley, Munich, uh, that's Barcelona again. We are sprinting right here right now and as I've said behind the curtains here and we also have been sprinting the previous weekend and we will sprint in the weekend coming this week uh, and we also obviously will sprint on Friday as well so you're welcome to join us. So we work very hard on this and we already resolved uh, about 540 issues. A lot of stuff. Um, so um, obviously we come a long way but there's a lot more to do. We started off with uh, looking at Drupal 7 and what can Drupal 7 really do for you in terms of multilingual. And the set state of Drupal 7 multilingual is there are some things that are multilingual, but it's mostly not a multilingual system. So there is the locale module in core, which can define your languages and it can, tra and can download, tra it can uh, handle translations that you downloaded and manually imported. But that's very painful to manage those translations. So in contrib, we built a module called localization update, which automates downloading those translations from the community and imports them for you. And so you have less hassle. If you have a hundred modules and three languages, if you don't have this module, you need to manually download 300 files to your desktop and then manually upload 300 files through the web interface to Drupal core and then import them. It's very painful otherwise. Uh, we also have content translation in Drupal 7, which is great because it can translate nodes it cannot translate anything else. So if you want to translate user profiles, taxonomy terms, menus, views, whatever else, it is, there's no help for you in there. There's nothing. So uh, Jose, Re Jose Re Rejero went on and built the i89 module suite, which has a lot of modules in there. And it helps you actually translate a lot of other things like menus, taxonomy terms, uh, field configuration, v uh, views to some degree, etc. The problem there is, is there's a lot of modules to do this stuff because Drupal core is not multilingual in those areas in seven. So it needs to work around Drupal core and try to provide that feature uh, um, 
fr from the outside, basically. Uh, and also, there is a generic system that you need to map every functionality to. So if you have views module, then you need to have i18n and you need to have i18n views module. So it connects views with i18n. Or if you have web form, you have web form and i18n, and then you have web form localization module that connects the two. And then it quickly becomes a lot of modules, a uh, huge maze of modules. And this will not even translate your site settings or your configuration. So there is a variable module suite that allows you to translate your site name and all of the other uh, fun things. Um, as again, a multiple multiples of modules. And then you want to have an e-commerce site and you go and install Drupal Commerce and you find that these 30 things that you've installed help you in no way in the process. So you install the entity translation module, which actually can translate the commerce entities. And then it will use field translation, which is very different from content translation. And now you have two different solutions on your site for translating taxonomy terms. So you can tr use X entity translation or I18N, and then you have two m methods to translate nodes. You can use content translation or entity translation, and it becomes a mess. So it really requires a lot of planning to build out a multilingual site on Drupal 7. It's possible. There's a very great book that you can uh, buy. Kristen Paul wrote it, and I tech reviewed it, so it should be very great. And um, you can buy that, and it explains all, all of these processes, but it's a lot of work and a lot of contributed modules. And what we really wanted to do is to get from an afterthought to be a base thing in the system. And also to have a system where you build something and it's future-proof for all the contributed modules and all the things that you build for your site. So we decided to approach this uh, in um, using four pillars for areas that we wanted to work on. So we wanted to have a base language system where Drupal understand language in every place possible in Drupal core, and it would know the language of everything in Drupal core and will not assume things that this menu may be in your site default language or maybe not. That's not something we wanted to keep in Drupal 8. We wanted to know data about your stuff. We also wanted to improve uh, the interface translation, software translation capabilities, bring in all the stuff that we built in Contrib to help you in managing those translations and then do some more fun. We wanted to have a content translation system that does not only apply to nodes, it applies to everything in content for your site. And we wanted to have a configuration translation system that's also in core and would support you in translating any of your configuration, be it views or field formats or, or field settings or input formats or user roles or uh, rules or whatever else you, you want. So let's uh, look at these four pillars and see what we've uh, done in each area and see how useful these improvements will be for you. So the language pillar, we wanted to make it very evident in Drupal 8 that it's a multilingual system. So we moved language selection up to the first step in installer. And we've included uh, all of the languages that localized Drupal.org supports. So you can pick any of those languages that you want. And you can hit, uh, hit submit on that, wh whatever you like. We even pre-select the language for you based on your browser preference. So you don't even need to select one. And then you can, uh, as you select it, it downloads the translations live from the, uh, from the internet. And then it applies it to your installer. And from the second step, it's all in that foreign language. It supports right to left and it can download any translations uh, from the community that's available. If you don't have an internet connection, it will try for a little while and it will say, sorry, I can download that, please proceed in English. Um, so it's all uh, built in there. So from here on, you can install in your own language. There's no manual steps involved. There's no install text 10 step process to download something, put it in a place, rename the file, nothing. Uh, you just pick the language and we even pre-select for you from your browser preference. We also uh, thought it's very important to extend on the language assignment capabilities. So what I've said is Drupal Core has some language capabilities. It can assign language to nodes, users, and aliases, to some degree comments as well. But it does in Drupal 7, it cannot assign language to anything else. So for all the other data that's in Drupal 7, Drupal needs to assume that it's in some language. And in Drupal 7, it assumes it's in the site default language, and it's very dangerous to change the site default language on a site that you already built in Drupal 7, don't do that ever, because it changes the assumptions about what language your data is in. And we didn't want that pain at all in Drupal 8. So we, what we did is we extended this to everything that we could in Drupal 8 core. So you can assign language to taxonomy terms. You can say this view is in French or Czech. You can say your site information is in a specific language. So when you install in German, we save your site name and your slogan in German so we know that you've installed in German and this information is in German and it's independently uh, assigned to that uh, from any other part of the site. 
and this is extendable to anything. So we have a generic system for assigning language to content, to configuration, and we build this out for every piece of content and configuration that's in Drupal core. So we have all that data. We also have very flexible language UI set up for that. So we have this content language settings and the admin interface, and we have all the content, uh, content entity types there, uh, like comments and uh, users and taxonomy terms, et cetera. And then you can select which uh, those types of content, which language they will default to. And if you want to show a language selector on them, or if you don't want to show a language selector on them. So by default, all of them will save in the site default language, but you can configure forums to always be in English if you have a monolingual forum, but your site otherwise is multilingual. You can have multi multilingual custom blocks and you can show a language selector on them, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very easy to configure where you want to expose this selection to the user and where you want to hardwire specific languages for specific content. And you can later change your mind and change the defaults as well if you want to. So we, we track that data and we allow you to configure that user interface uh, on how we track that data. And once we track that data, we can do a lot of exciting things with that. So we have block visibility per language, which allows you to uh, do site, site page builds based on language conditions. So show specific blocks for specific, specific language pages. And since we have all the language data and we have views in core, and we have a lot of pages converted to views, uh, even the content admin page and the user administration, the user listing administration page. It's very easy to customize pages for specific language needs. So you can add language filters, you can add language conditions on how they fall back on language selection, what they display, what they filter on, etc. So we don't need like IET and magic functions to do this because views is in core, pages are converted to views. We have all the data about the languages of your things. So you can use views and their conditions to build the right, uh, right pages. And then you can, uh, part of your pages, you can use block visibility to hide or show based on language as well. So we have all the data and thanks to views, we can uh, build off of that as well. We also extended a great deal on how we select languages for the page. So we used to have some selections here. The URL language selection now includes in-place configuration for your path prefixes and domains. So you don't need to go to another place. You have an overview of all the settings which is pretty cool. We have session selection as before. We have account preference as before. We have browser preference. And now we understand that there is language codes outside of Drupal that are not the same as inside Drupal. So you can add mappings of outside language codes to inside language codes. So we can detect languages based on that as well. We have account preference for admin pages uh, uh, separately, and we have um, a configurable language fallback. So you don't need to change the site default language to change what language you are uh, site selection will fall back on, which is again improving a lot in uh, in what language uh, will the page be handled with. So we improved the URL configuration a great deal. We improved browser detection by supporting language mappings from outside language codes to inside language codes. Um, and we added an account preference for admin pages, which is very useful if you don't want, if you have a multilingual site, but you only know like two two of those languages and you still want to delete spam from the Chinese pages, then those pages, when you go to them, uh, when you administer them, they will not be Chinese. They, you will get the right language for your own uh, preference. And then we have selected language instead of default language, so you can configure the fallback language on the site as well. We also built in name transliteration, and we applied it to content types in course. So of course, if you add an English content type name, it works. But then if you add something else, like in this case, a Hungarian word that, that contains all the accents in, hang, uh, in Hungarian, then it will uh, transliterate it to a meaningful English word. And this, all, this also works for basically any other language. So it works for uh, Russian, it works for Czech, all kinds of other things that we have built in. So we only apply this to, uh, to uh, machine names at this point. It is possible to build contributed modules to apply this to file uploads we any, any other thing, but we have the base system in core and we applied it to machine names already. It would be great to extend core to support it for files. It's not a very easy task, task to do, but it would be a lot of fun. And uh, one more thing that, uh, that Europeans would really love, I think, is English can be deleted now. <laughs> so there's no need to keep around English on your site if you're never going to use English. In fact, if you install in a different language like Arabic that I installed at the start, there is no English added to the system. So everything will be um, understood as Arabic and there's no like magic English showing up in different language selectors if you don't want to have that. 
uh, it's easy to add it back um, if you want it. So this, these are these were a lot of improvements, and this is only one fourth of our initiative. One fourth. So you, this is the base language layer. You can delete English. We uh, have a very flexible language selection system, detection and selection system now. We have block visibility per language. Views is in core. Um, we have all the data and you can build views out of language uh, conditions. Um, we have flexible configuration for language selectors and language defaults on entities. We have much wider assignment for language so we know much more about your data and language relations. And we are first in the installer, so, so if you don't recognize that Drupal is multilingual, then we can't go anywhere uh, better than this. So that was the first of four areas. Second area, interface translation. Uh, this is what used to be the main function of, of locale module. If you want to take, yeah, sure. Let's do a question. Yeah, so the question is what happens if I delete English and there's no translation? Uh, reality is Drupal's, the software is still written in English, so the text is already in the code. So we can take that text and display that even if you don't have English configured because the text comes from the code anyway. All the things that you create on your site, you will create in your own language because you don't want English, so you will create it in your own language. So that's available in your language and all the stuff that comes from code will be uh, in English if you don't translate them. So, the so it works. <laughs> It works the same way. T function works the same way as before. So uh, interface translation is our second pillar and we built in the automated downloads that, that we have in localization update, except it's much cooler now uh, because it's also built into the installer right away as you have seen. So it's, it identifies all the versions of your projects and it automatically downloads translations for every module that you have and every theme. And it's future proof, it works for every distribution, works with every module that's on Drupal.org and has this information. So um, I think it's way easier. We also centralize the translation file location to one directory. And why, uh, why is that important? Uh, it's important because it allows you to have deployments with translations. So you can have the automated downloads on the staging or the dev site. And then you can turn off the automated downloads on the live site because you don't want your live site to magically have new translations every day. That would be kind of confusing. So you can have it on dev and stage. You can do the quality assurance. And then because it's only one directory, it can, it can actually be put into Git if you want. So you can version control. You can see diffs of what translations changed in your interface. Uh, it's very cool. And then you can push that to live. And with the single drush command, you can import all the, all the translations there. And you are ready to go with your uh, QA translation updates. So I think it's, it's very powerful. Uh, we've also uh, put in customization tracking. So how many of you are not entirely happy with the translations in your language for Drupal? Some of you. Oh, a lot of you, okay. So one option is you go and help out the translation team, okay? That's the best option. But the translation team will not always like your suggestions, right? You wanna have special text for an audience, you are building a site for teenagers or you're building a site for serious corporate types, you need to have different uh, wording. So what we have in Drupal 8, we track customizations uh, that are different from the community translations. So you can customize those strings and we will protect those translations from being overwritten from the community. Or all those customizations will be kept for you. And you can export them and use them in another project and reuse them uh, as you want. So I think uh, that's also very powerful. And we worked a lot on supporting small sites so the import, importing of PO files, even though we import huge PO files and Drupal 8 is much bigger than Drupal 7, uh, the import happens in a process that it will never time out your PHP process. We also have a whole new interface for, uh, for translating on the site. It's a table of source text and target text, and it's for one specific language. Uh, in Drupal 7, you translate uh, for all of them at once, which is not very likely uh, applicable to you. And it supports uh, plural strings. It supports any number of plurals, unlike the Drupal 7 built-in user interface. So you've probably never seen the version of this interface in Drupal 7 because it's useless. It's, it can be used. So we have a very nice user interface for this in 8. And now since you customize these strings in the translations, you can filter for only translated strings and only customized translations. And now these are more customized translations. So it's very easy to translate and, um, and uh, review what you did and uh, just move over with uh, these tasks. Another good thing that we did to English is now you can translate to English. 
So if you go, so by default, uh, the translation is not applicable to English, but if you edit English, there's a checkbox to enable translation to English. And then you save that, and then now you can translate to English, which means that you can replace English text with a different English text. So if you want to replace login with sign in, then you can search for login. You can replace that with uh, sign in. You can save this translation, and uh, it will be available on your front end on the login form. So there, the button that was used to say login now says sign in. So you don't need to add my custom English, whatever uh, that you needed to have in seven. It's very painful. It, um, it breaks your uh, uh, storage for English content, etc. You just uh, translation enable English. The reason we don't have this by default is because it will slow down your English pages because this is extra database queries and, and things like that. So you need to um, accept this if you want to have this feature. So this is only the second pillar of the Drupal 8 multilingual improvements. We still have two pillars. Uh, so you can translate to English. Uh, there's a whole new interface for insight uh, translations. Uh, we track your customizations and we protect them from being overwritten from the community. We centralized the translations uh, into one directory, so it's very deployment friendly, and you can push from a staging dev to live, and you can turn off the automation on the live, but otherwise we can automatically download your translations. And it's a separate module, so if you only want to track language uh, on your stuff, if you have a search engine and you, want, and you have data, and you just want to track language, you don't need to enable this module and, uh, and your site will be actually faster. So the third pillar that we have is content translation. And what I said is the problem in Drupal 7 is content uh, only really applies to nodes. So we wanted to solve this in Drupal 8 and our goal was to support all content entities in Drupal core. What does that mean? So what are content entities in Drupal core? So first of all, there are entities which store itemized things. And some of the entities are content entities. This is not 100% true graph, but it's a good generalization for our session. So the content entities are like nodes, users, comments, terms, contact messages, menu items, et cetera, et cetera. Mostly the things that you can put fields on. Not all of them are fieldable, but most of them are fieldable. So we made it so that each of these can store their own language. And we also made it so that each of these can have their fields translated. So whatever fields you can put on users for profiles, or put on taxonomy terms or, uh, or even comments uh, will be translatable. And we have a very flexible configuration interface for this. Uh, so it's the same UI that you've seen for a language setup, but if you enable the content translation module, it will have a checkbox on the side. You can mark something translatable, the article content type, for example. And now it can, uh, you can configure per field. So it has a body field, an image field, and the image field has a file, an alt text, a title, and then it has a tags field. So the image field even has subfield components that you can configure, and you can share the file between different translations, but you can translate the alt text and the uh, label, et cetera. So it's very powerful, and there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of granularity in how you can configure this. So if you want to have an e-commerce site and you don't want to translate your product prices, why would you want to translate your product prices? Then you will never enable translation for that field, and it will be same across everything. And then you can like um, enable the product image translation, but don't enable for the product image itself. You can enable for the label on it and the alt text. And then you can translate those, and the image itself will be the same across languages. So it's very powerful, and it applies to every content in Drupal core, and it applies to every entity content entity in Drupal contrib that's going to be built. So it's uh, very um, very granular and it's very future-proof. In terms of the translation interface, there is not much of a news here for you because it's basically very similar to what we've had in Drupal 7. You have a translate tab, you go there, it's a list of languages, and then you can add a translation, and then you get the note form, the new note form in Drupal 8, and then you add that translation, and then it will be available for you. So for the user, at the end, it's a very similar UI, but the internals are entirely different. So the module name is the same, but there is no there is no common thing between the two modules. This will translate every entity, and it will store the translations in the fields, and it will have a very similar user interface, but it internally works very different. So uh, so we correct the problem of supporting all entities, but Drupal eight is not yet done. So Drupal eight there is no Drupal eight that you can download right now. So it's not probably not yet done. 
So we are still working on uh, property translatability. For example, obviously it would be very useful for you to translate note titles, right? That's kind of useful. Um, and we don't have that right now on the user interface. So if you go there, you try to edit it, you will file a bug report that you can translate it. Yes, you cannot at the moment. We are working on that one and we are working on solutions for um, menus and taxonomy terms. We may not have a core solution for those two to have properties, but any fields you put on them are translatable. We strive to have a solution for properties. We may not be able to get there. The other bad news for you is the upgrade path will be a country module. There's a lot involved in this migration process because we need to take your old nodes and merge them together and put them into one node and then do path redirects and all kinds of fun things. So this will probably not be a fitting solution for core. So we will build it in Contrib. And uh, we need to have be very creative about how we migrate I18N and NTD translation stuff to this new system because we bring in all the good stuff from I18N and NTD translation into one system and we need to migrate all your data. However, there are a lot of other good news in this area. Uh, the core search APIs we updated to support this system. So if you use core search, then all of those things will be indexed as separate things in the search. And the search API passes on all the language information uh, for any other module. So if you use Apache Solar, Apache Solar module will get all the language information that we have. And then it's uh, up to Apache Solar module what it does with that information. Uh, what's especially funky is Node Access API supports language, so you can have separate access per language, which may be very interesting. Like if you are selling con selling access to content, then you can sell access to German, but a separate sign up for French or something uh, is possible. Um, so, in summary, this is the third pillar of Drupal Core. We have Node Access API supported. which is great if you want to have granular access or selling stuff based on language. We have search index, uh, indexing as separate things for these uh, translations. Search APIs know all this data. Uh, it applies to all content entities. It's future proof, it's distribution proof. It applies per bundle, entity bundle, and then the field level and the subfield level. Like you've seen for image fields, you can uh, make part of the image field translatable. The property translations we are working on, we may not have all of them ready by the Drupal 8 release, but we would love to have them ready. And the upgrade path will be in Contrib. It's not yet ready at all. The fourth pillar is configuration translation. And this is an area where we are really thankful for the configuration initiative because they did an awesome job of applying a new system to every configuration part of Drupal 8 core. So I've shown this, um, thing before about entities having con content entities and all those things. And there's also a generic configuration system. So there's a generic content entity system and there's a generic configuration system, uh, which is very good for the multilingual initiative because we can build generic solutions for content and configuration. And all the things we built for configuration will apply to views, vocabularies, contact categories, menus, fields, input formats, user roles, uh, whatever else is on the system, basically entity display modes, entity form modes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we have we we have a generic solution for that as well, and it applies to configuration entities and configuration uh, instances or configuration or standalone configuration as well in general. Now, if you build something for Drupal, and you are not in the green circle, or the blue circle, and you want to have multilingual. You are on your own. <laughs> you, we don't have any solutions for you. So in core, we do have path aliases that have a one-off implementation of language. It's neither content, neither config. But if you want, if you do something with Drupal 8 and, and you are not a content entity or a configuration of some kind, then you are on your own. So. Embrace these APIs. It's, a very, it's gonna be very good for you because configuration entities have a lot of developer experience backend. It, they automatically store your data. They have list controllers. They have form controllers. They have um, drag and droppable form controllers that you can just like write a few lines of code and you get a drag and drop list controller that you can do. Uh, content has view support all around. So there's a lot of power behind these two systems. So you should um, adopt these two systems and uh, work off of them because they are amazing. So what we do for our configuration is we track, again, language on each configuration file. So you can create a view only in French, 
and you can create a view only in Flemish or Dutch or whatever you want. And then you can translate it from there to other languages and have all that fun stuff. Uh, so this is useful if you have local community areas in your site and you need to do something for that area, but you don't, uh, you don't want to do it as a general solution. You can do a one-off French view for that area or a one-off uh, German view for the other area. All the language overrides for configuration, all the language uh, for configuration is stored in the configuration system. So it's, again, very deployment friendly. It deploys with your configuration to, the, to uh, one side to another. So it's very, uh, very well integrated with how the uh, configuration process works. We have a UI in core to translate shipped configuration, like this contact category that's called website feedback. You can go to the translation UI that I've shown you a few slides earlier and look for, look for that. So let, here I enable a language switcher so that I can actually show you that it works because otherwise I could just like hack URLs, but that's not very visible for you. So I enable a language switcher and I have uh, English and Hungarian because I know Hungarian best, uh, my mother tongue. So I switch to Hungarian, nothing changes because I don't have Hungarian translation for this. I can go to the translation user interface and just take that website feedback string, search for that and translate it to Hungarian right there. And because this is part of the software, it's been shipped with Drupal core. It is included in the software translation UI. So I can translate it, I can save it, and from here on, it's saved back to the configuration system and voila, it's in Hungarian. Um, so anything that ships with Drupal core, you can translate using this built-in user interface in core. Um, the uh, little caveat here is we are still working on localized Drupal.org integration. So there's gonna be modules, distributions, themes that ship with fields and entity display modes and all kinds of configuration. And we want to get all the text from them and make it available for the community to translate for you. So when you download Drupal, all the views and content types and fields and everything will be translated from the community. We don't have all that integration done yet. This is again, not an easy problem and we need more hands to help with that, but we will we should be able to do that because otherwise Drupal 8 is kind of not fulfilling its promise of being fully multilingual. This is for built-in configuration. You, you're also gonna build a lot of your own configurations. So we built a module that's applicable to any configuration built-in or otherwise, and it's called the configuration translation module, and we are proposing this for core. So you can, for example, translate your block with this. So I go to edit my block, I want to translate the block label to Hungarian. I translate it to Hungarian. I type in the Hungarian title. I save that. And then that's available in Hungarian. I can do the same for my site name and my slogan. I have my fantastic site. I go to the site information screen. Oh, there's a translate tab. Who would have thought? I can translate the site name and my slogan. I can add a Hungarian translation, type in my site name translation, type in my slogan translation will be saved to the configuration system. If I come back to the screen, it will come back at me. <clears throat> and uh, it's available. So if I switch to Hungarian, my fantastic site changes to fantastikushwebolda, which is Hungarian. And my blog title will change and my um, uh, config label changed, etc. And this applies to configuration in Drupal core, like user role names, input formats, views, fields, content types, uh, whatever. So this is a generic user interface that puts translate tabs on all the things that are configuration. So you go, and, and there's even contextual links. So you go in a block, you can configure block, translate block, you go into view, edit view, translate view. So you can go in and translate stuff as you go. And this is a fully built module. It's available right now for Drupal core. You can try it out, it works. And we hope to have it committed to Drupal core in a couple of weeks, if not this week. Um, it's a feature and we are man months after feature freeze, but we are still arguing for this. It, we found a lot of core bugs while we've been building this out because this crosses a lot of core systems from configuration, language, routing, um, views, and all kinds of areas uh, we are using in this, um, that, um, that it's a very powerful thing that, that um, not only good for user experience, but also very good for developers. So, the configuration area, we wanted to have a solution that's future-proof and it works for everyone. So we built a full translation module that applies to all the content, all the configuration, all the config entities, all the normal configuration on your site. We really worked very hard to make the developer experience of this as simple as possible. 
So it's very easy to build uh, with this. There's very minimal stuff that you need to do to integrate with this uh, module. We have standard translation tabs here that are, you know, from content translation is the same, um, uh, same UI basically. We work with config overrides in the configuration system. So it's deployment friendly. It works for anything in configuration. And we have a core user interface for shipped configuration. So that's all the things that I think uh, are good about uh, Drupal 8 multilingual improvements. So we have a layer, base layer for language. We know language of almost everything you have in Drupal core. And we have much better language assignment and language detection capabilities. We have a software translation system that has a much better user interface. It automatically downloads from the community. It tracks your customizations. Uh, and it has a lot of fine UI improvements. We have a content translation system that applies to every content entity. It works off of fields. It has you. Um, it allows you to configure subfield level translations, um, and it's very powerful for that. And it integrates with views as well. And we have a configuration translation system that applies to everything in the configuration system, even your contributed modules. And it has a has has integration with the software translation system, so we can provide you with default translations for views and content types and everything that ships with core. And we have a user interface for you to translate any configuration on your site. <clears throat> so that's what's in Drupal 8 core. But, but there's one more thing that's not in Drupal 8 core. So if anybody like seriously looked at these slides, there's four pillars and there's, I could also have set four silos because there are different systems with different solutions. They try to have a very similar user interface, which is, by the way, also accessible. We worked on that as well. Uh, but there are three silos. So there's a silo for software translation, there's a silo for content, and there's a silo for configuration. And they are very different systems inside. Um, so those are silos. So if you want to really like control your site translations, you need to have a system on top of this that sits on top. It swoops in all the, all the stuff, all the uh, content and it uh, pushes it outward. So there's two possible solutions for that. One is the TMGMT module that's already being ported to Drupal 8. This is the Drupal 8 TMGMT screenshot that can take your stuff from these content entities, from software translation, and eventually from config translation. It's not yet built, but it's coming. And it can integrate with outside translation providers, etc. So this is a layer on top of what's available in Drupal core and it integrates all of these silos into one system and can integrate with third parties. There's a session about this on Thursday, uh, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. in the Amazing Labs room. And there's another solution uh, from the Lingo Tech guys who are uh, sponsors of this conference and you can talk to them uh, at the uh, exhibition area and they have a buff about their solution uh, on Thursday from uh, 10.45 to 11.45 uh, where they show their integrated uh, solution for this that sits on top of, of all these systems. I believe they don't have that ported to Drupal 8 yet, but they will have it eventually. Uh, they have a Drupal 7 version right now. So uh, there is a lot of stuff. And we, as you've seen, we still have a lot to do. So if you want to get involved, there's a Sprint Friday uh, this week. There's a mentoring sprint for those who have not been involved so far. Uh, and there's a multilingual sprint for those who have been involved or uh, feel confident to join the team right away. If you don't feel confident to join the team right away, there's a mentoring sprint. They will let you get started and in the afternoon you can come over and, and work with us. But if you just feel like coming over uh, with us, then that's also fine. Uh, we also have a lot of other ways to get involved. We have a website at drupal8multilingual.org. If you want to translate Drupal 8, uh, it's already available and localized at drupal.org for translation. We have a Twitter feed. We have a sprint in Prague that, as I've said, we started last Saturday, and we are here until Sunday, um, late Sunday, I think 2 a.m. on Monday, actually. Uh, we have a sprint space, sprint space booked, and there's a sprint in Vienna coming up, and there is more sprints coming. We will sprint in Sagat Drupal Dev Days uh, March as well. If you want to have your hands on all of this, as I've said, this already, already works, and you can try it out. The configuration translation stuff is not in core yet. So that's a module that we maintain as a contributed module at the moment. You go there, configuration translation module. It has a nice green button, try it with Drupal 8. You hit that button. You get a simply test me site with Drupal 8 and this module. And it has all the things that I talked about working and you can try it out. 
And once again, I'm here to talk about this, but this is a work of almost 900 people, 500 issues, most of whom are, or not most of whom, a lot of whom are actually behind these curtains and working on this right now. So more of these things get fixed in core and, uh, and it will be even better for you at the end. So with that, I'm open for uh, questions and discussions. Any questions? So if you have questions, there's a mic right there. It's easiest to if you like line up behind the mic or if you don't want to line up, I will try to hear you and repeat your question. So the question is, if, is it possible to install one general language in different variants like US English or UK English? The answer is, is yes. So there is a UK English on localized Drupal.org. Uh, they are not very active in, in, uh, re in replacing in, uh, US English text with UK English, uh, but it is possible, yes. Um, there is a more complex use case there, like if you want to have formal German and informal German, that's a bit more complex because there you probably want to fall back on a translation or that's already a translation. And that is not possible in Drupal 8 core. However, the dependency injection architecture that was built in Drupal 8 is supports a contributed module to very easily swap out the T functions backend and do a fallback system. So the T function is, the, is dependency injected. So the logic inside it is, is replaceable. So a contributed module can very easily do language fallbacks across even different language translations. So if you don't have a translation in one language, it could fall back to another one. Um, this, uh, by the way, that's the system we even use to simplify the developer experience of Drupal 8. Now you can use the T function everywhere, even if you don't yet have a database set up, it works because it's dependency injected, it's very powerful. Other questions? Uh, so, um, the translation interface is not very good at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, is it possible in Drupal 8 to define translation groups? So, uh, all your translations in the front end would be packed into one group. So, your client would only be able to see that one group. Uh, since we've got like 33 languages, they need to translate and it's a mess. So, we made our own system. So, you want to... So you want to group by what? Uh, front end or just something. Because uh, it's like um, the context, uh, you can define the context, but you can't sort it in the translation interface or you can't mark, just show this context. It's just marked as context something. Yes, so yes. So uh, Drupal 7 already has a context, context that's possible to assign to strings. It is not for front and back end separation though. It's more for informing translators about whether like whether the word check is for a check that you that's a paper check or whether it's checking out something or stuff like that. So it's for de if defining additional or providing additional information for short strings. Uh, unfortunately, how Drupal is structured, it's very hard to tell if a string is going to show up on the back end or the front end. So like there's a module that comes, there's some strings coming from code and there are a lot of reusable components that are maybe used on the front end or maybe used on the back end. It's very hard to tell. So what, so I, I have an idea. So if somebody wants to build a contributed module, you can build this out because it's very possible to build a contributed module that gets this information from your site. So there's a module called the localization client module that collects all the strings that have been used on the page and it displays it at the bottom. And then you can in place translate it. It's not available yet for Drupal 8, it's for 7. The, the technology that that module is using, uh, collecting all the strings that have been used on the page, can be used to run, uh, run logic on your site for a week or two weeks. And then it will collect strings that are used on a page and it will store that location information. Drupal 8 can store much more granular location information for strings now, by the way. And then after a week or two, you have all the information about which strings are used on which paths on your site. And then you have a much better idea about which strings are front end and back end. So Drupal does not know that. And, and 
it's really depend on how it shows up on your site. So it's possible to build a module that crawls that that crawls that collects that information as time goes on, and then you have that information. I I I discussed this idea and at several conferences, and nobody built that module yet. So if somebody wants to build that module, I think it's a great idea because that's a frequent request. Yes. But would it be possible just to make it sortable by context? Once you have the context, interface. once you have that context, yes. But Drupal Core cannot tell you that context. So like a views plugin, it has an admin UI part and a front end UI part, and some of it will show on the front end, some of it will show on the back end. If you don't expose the filter on the UI, if you don't expose the views filter, it will never show on the front end. It will only show on the back end. So there's a lot of, lot of dependencies based on how you configure something. If you have a field, has field configuration, but you hide it on the form mode. You don't show it on the front end ever, and it's not a front end field, it's a back end field. So it's very hard, there, there's a lot of flexibility in Drupal core, and we can't really know off, like, out of the code what's gonna happen with that string. So it's only your site that, that through time can have that experience itself of what's appearing on the front end and on the back end, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's possible to write a module, we have the technology in core to collect that information but nobody has written that module yet. I can see one more question coming or two. Yeah, quick question. Uh, is a selection of the translate interface and content translation still separated? Can I have only a French backend and some uh, like eight language in front end? Yes, so so there's so what I've shown I, I enabled the language switcher block, but in Drupal seven, if you have the entity translation module enabled, you have like two or three language switcher blocks, which is very confusing. So in eight, we only show one one block by default and one language type, but you can enable content language to be separate from interface language. That's also a checkbox on the interface, on the language selection, and then you can configure them separately, and then you can configure you can have different blocks for fallback. So that flexibility is in there, but it's not shown by default because it was confusing, but it's still possible. Okay, and another one is, um, you talked about uh, language customization, like for informal English or commercial yes. context. Will that be uh, uploaded to localize or is there some plan to do some, I don't know, inheritance in language on localize? There is a great issue on localizedrupal.org which actually has some code to have language inheritance. Um, so the main so the main issue with localized Drupal.org is it's running on Drupal 6. <laughs> and now that Drupal 8 is hopefully about to be released, then we don't want to build new functionality on Drupal 6, it will not be supported anymore. So we want to bring that site over to Drupal 7 and there is much less people working on localized than on Drupal.org itself. And Drupal.org itself got a long way to update to Drupal 7, so there's an ongoing process to update the site to Drupal 7, but it's not done. Um, so we need more people to help with that. Um, and uh, we actually have a post on localized Drupal.org to help with that, as you probably know. Um, so once we port that to Drupal 7, then we can extend that functionality to however wide we want. We have a lot of feature requests from different teams and we really want to improve the experience of moderating strings and language inheritance and uh, activity monitoring and all kinds of other things so that you can be more effective in translations. Thanks. Thank you. I want to know if it's uh, possible to reap the benefits of automatic uh, translation updates for your modules that are not on Drupal.org. Is it possible? Yes. So, so, uh, so the, we, so we use the back, so the automated translation updates uses the backend of the update module and the update module has this idea of the project source. So by default, the project source is updates.drupal.org where it gets all the update data. But if the project source is somewhere else, then we get the update data from there, the version numbers that whether we need to download something. And there is also a localization project URL, which can be different per project. So if you have a module that you build for your own, then it then it then it can very well have its own um, its own translation source URL. 
and it will get all the updates from there as well. Yeah, it's totally possible, yes. Thank you. Um, my question was about uh, if, if, uh, is it possible to like lock out some module which has full translation so it doesn't like come into my website So the question was if it is possible to block modules when they have wrong translations to get to get downloaded to your site. Um, so, so I think the answer to that is probably no. There is no core solution for that. Uh, you can, like, it is possible to write a module to alter the project information and like have a page where you can check off modules that you never want to get translation updates from. But there's no core user interface to like configure by module whether you want to have this module updates or that module updates. Uh, it's all um, it's all applied to all the modules. Um, if they have so, I think if they have wrong translations, you probably want to have English translations instead. I guess. Uh, so it's also possible to write a module based on the trans the downloaded translations to remove those translations from your site. Or, so there's different ways to write a module to solve this problem, but there is no core solution to, to solve this problem. The best solution to go and help with those translations and I make them best, better. With, with the yeah, submit them and then get them, ignored. try to get them reviewed. Yeah, I know. It's, it's sometimes you get ignored. <laughs> Thank you. I have a question about the uh, uh, about the you know when you have uh, strings that you find and you want to translate, mm -hmm. uh, not specially just from the modules, but from, for example, if you have a login or or a, a string like that, to have that translated uh, as an inline translation, where you have. Uh, <coughs> what I am actually re trying to reference is uh, from. Uh, from the Magento uh, web commerce system, you can uh, enable to have inland translations displayed and you will just pick out this one string and translate, it, translate that in line when you are working instead of going into the back end and translate the uh, strings there. Yeah, so almost. So what we have, we have a localization client module that collects all the strings that have been displayed on a page and it has a toolbar at the bottom of the screen that contains all the strings on the page and it has a search feature. So you can search for the string and you can translate it there. We don't have in place translation. There's a very long standing feature request in that module to have that. Um, the, so it may be possible in some cases to do that. The problem is that when we translate it, we can't really inject any additional markup or any behavior to that, to that text mm -hmm. because we have all these security measures that it may be escaped, on, escaped later on in the page display process. And they will screw up your page display uh, um, altogether. So we can't really add in additional markup or information about the source string. So when, you, when the page is downloaded, we can't really tell which part of the page comes from which source string. So we can't really like do things like click there and translate it. Uh, it may be possible in some limited cases, but it, but it, but we so far had a hard time imagining how we can do it generically. There's a very long-standing issue in the l underscore client modules issue queue to have click clickable trans clickable page elements that you can just click and translate in place. So you can look there and look at all the discussions and arguments and why, and what we tried and where we failed. Um, there's there's a lot of things that we looked at and tried, and we so far haven't been able to crack that problem. Thank you. So what if you already have nodes that have been translated but haven't been associated together? I know with IATN there's a way to do that, where you get a, a nice little table and you can select the existing nodes. I didn't see that in the screenshots. Yes. So in, in this case, in Drupal 8, all entity translations are stored in the same entity. So they will not need to be an associated in any way because it's the same entity. If you have content from before Drupal 8 or 
in Drupal 8, for some reason, you create separate pieces of content mm -hmm. and you need to later on associate them, uh, then we will need a solution for that. We don't have a solution for merging those entities into one as translations, but we will need to build that functionality for the migration path. We actually have, a, have code for that in the entity translation Drupal 7 version. So we have code for that migration, but we need to port that to Drupal 8. And once we have that code, we can release a version of that module or we can have a sub-module there or something that allows you to do these merges. And then they will be fun functionally identical to that process where you say this node, that node, please put them up as, as translations and put them together. Okay, that'll be very helpful for those doing big migrations from yes. Joomla, for example. Indeed. So the logic already needs to be in the migration path. So I'm not concerned that it will not be written. We then need to write it in a way, is a very good point that we need to write it in a way that it's available as a generic solution for later on as well when you need to merge things. Yeah. Okay. Great, so uh, that was it. Thank you.